All right. <clears throat> Hello. I have my Apple Pencil. If you don't get it, I lost it and I was freaking out for a while. Because I need it for work. And I need it for my pants. My wife made them. They're awesome. Alright. SM57 is on the floor zone. Uh, so, I have Eve Audio TS112 subwoofer. Pretty big boy here. And. I have Eve Audio SC307 monitors, three-way monitors. So let's unpack these guys. And let's see what we got here. If this doesn't take too long, then I'll probably go ahead and go through the whole setting up stuff on stream. So I purchased these from Front End Audio and there's probably going to be a blog post about that experience. Uh, it was very positive. However, these were drop shipped directly from the US distributor of Eve Audio, which was Alto Music. Looks like I have a single pad. I have a tweeter guard. I don't know if I'll use that or not. Let me pull up my preview on my screen in the background. You can't see it. Move out of your quick start guy. A thank you and best regards from Berlin, Germany. Which appears to actually be signed in real pen, which is kind of interesting. A power cable appears to be about two meters long. Let's see here, just under an arm's length, so two meter power cable. Uh, very dense foam packing. I like this stuff. I'm going to reuse this for another project that you'll see on my website. Uh. So, let me go ahead put this up here on this box. Last time I unboxed the monitors live on stream, I nearly destroyed them. The box if you want to see it. Very nice, well packed. Expected that they made it from Berlin to St. Petersburg without a problem. Let's go ahead and crank you up here so you can see this. this is the speaker. Let me turn this around. So we can reveal the speaker. So these by default are meant to be used on their side. These are a lot prettier in person than they look like on the website. Tell you what. They really are. So. Let me move this camera down a bit so you can see it. And then back this up. These are rear ported monitors. So there's ports on the rear, which I'll show you in a second. This is an RS2 tweeter. Um, one of these is mid range, one of them's low frequency driver. It's switchable on the back, I believe. Possibly. Yes, woofer select. So you can switch which one of these is on is the woofer or the low frequency driver, however you want to say it. It's on their side, so I can explain that if you're not familiar with it. So I believe, according to the manual, you want the mid 
frequency driver on the middle, low frequency driver on the outside. And since this can be either the left or right monitor, you uh, need to be able to switch which is which. So these actually look really nice. They look really nice. And they are a lot heavier than I thought they would be. They weigh like 37 pounds, which isn't like a big deal. It's not the end of the world, but it's not exactly a big box, you know? All right. Let me put my stuff off to the side. I have a single rubber foot. No. All right, this is. This is a pad. Don't know if you can barely see on the back. Can't see it. Yeah, maybe you can see it there. Barely. Very small rubber pads come out of that block. Somebody was asking about uh, the software I use to record videos for Admiral Bumblebee on YouTube, which is what you're watching right now. If you're not familiar with this knife, this is, I believe, an Ulfa AK-1, I believe is the model. If you go on Amazon and look up Ulfa Hobby Knife, I have a ridiculously in-depth review on this rather simple tool because I strongly believe this is a superlative cutting device and it's the sort of thing that you just need all the time so you can't see this but same stuff hand signed quick start these are DSP based monitors which means the audio comes in analog goes digital, comes out analog, which means that these have digital controls, which I will probably end up showing you at this point because this is going pretty fast. Um, somebody just mentioned that they have three-way monitors and their monitors don't have a switch. That's because they are Neumann KH310 and those are designed in an asymmetric manner. So there's only one way you can set them up can't switch them. These are symmetrical, which means that they are switchable electronically. Once again, three, me three meter, two meter cable. I don't believe that's going to be sufficient for me. Luckily, I have an entire flight case full of cables and nothing but cables. Because I believe anybody who's into tech can Understand that every single time you get a cable, you save it. Doesn't matter if you sell the item, if you return the item, you save the cable, and you put it in a box. And no matter whether you ever need it again, you save every single cable. And I'm one of those people, and you will probably see by the end of the stream that behind my monitors I have one, two, three, four, five, six suitcases full of cables that are nothing but power cables, essentially. So when I'm opening these up, I'm also inspecting for any imperfections. I don't see anything. A little bit of German dust. I'll save that for later. When I'm hungry and I need a snack. All right. So, once again, these are super pretty. Super duper pretty. I bought these unheard. I uh, had not heard these when I purchased them. So, I am basically taking a huge leap of faith that People who designed the Atom monitors that I've been using for years also design these and they have similar preferences and tastes and desires from their monitors. I'm drinking a soda. Diet, A&W, 
root beer right over top of my new monitors, of course. Because why not? We're getting stupid up in here. I'm stacking my monitors over here. I don't actually know how I'm going to set these up, and you will see why that's a problem shortly. The big boy. That is a 2015 Gibson Midtown guitar. There you see on the, I believe that's the right hand of your screen, and that is an RG5121 Prestige in the background. I think 5121 is the model, something like that. And then. There's a vintage Jazzmaster, 52 replica Telecaster, American Elite Jazz Bass, all sorts of stuff back there. Alright, so this is the TS-112 subwoofer. This is a big boy. This is a subwoofer for people that like bass. This is too large for my room, I think, but I don't care. I'll make it work. And I'd rather have the option of just filtering my system as needed compared to just having a system that can't reproduce what I want when I just want to listen to some mixes loud and fun and see if they're banging or not. Or if I just want, you know, the double basses to make my chest rumble. Rumbo. Another two meter power cable. Another thick piece of packing foam. Subwoofer is much larger than I thought it was going to be. This is problematic. Alright. I think this only weighs like 80 pounds or something, so. I can get my fingers underneath it. Ah, I didn't think out the part where I got to get rid of the box. Oh, and there's a passive radiator on here too. Excuse me. It means that I am running out of places to put my hands. And I'll explain that in a second if you're not familiar with passive radiators. It appears one of feet came off in the box. I'm glad I noticed that. Comes with a lot of sil silica gel desiccants, which is nice. Got to keep things dry. There are metal components inside that will corrode and oxidize in the presence of moisture. And uh, that's not what we want. At least that's not what I want. I don't want to be developing patina on my audio equipment. Maybe on maybe on my uh, my fine imported carbon steel knives. That's fine. I can deal with the patina there. All right, off with the box that I have nowhere to put it. Uh oh. I have in the way. Okie dokie, so, take you downstairs, you gotta remember that I have a, uh, I have a clip to put on. If you are watching the stream and you just came up, I am unboxing new studio monitors, Eve SC307. And an Eve TS 112 subwoofer, which quite possibly is definitely overkill. So, uh, thing is big. I don't know if you can see it. Actually, let me go ahead and pull up OBS again. Okay, let's back this up. 
All right, so I'm going to need to spin you guys around a second here. So there, sorry for the jigglies. Here, I'll put a banjo in front of it. I don't know if you have a reference size for how big a banjo is, but it's a big subwoofer. Let me put you down a bit, a little bit more here. There we go. Here, banjo compared to it, about, I don't know, what else can we compare to it? I mean, it's bigger than a 14 inch snare drum. Guitar. It comes up to the seventh fret on a guitar, larger than the whole body. That's a full sized instrument. For varying differences, definitions of full size, five string bass. So, yeah, big boy. That is a big boy. Someone says, it reminds me of Adams a bit. Yes, that's because these were, uh, I believe, the the founder of Adam left and created Head, H-E-D-D, -D, and then some of the lead designers of Adam left and founded Eve Audio. Adam and Eve get it. I actually didn't get that until like two days ago. I'm usually pretty good with word puns, but I missed that. So yeah, that's actually why I went with these, even waiting without hearing them. It's because I use Adam Audio Monitors. And I like them, and I listen to some of the new Adams, and I don't like them. So, I, uh, I bought these because that sounded good. So, let me show you here. Webcam up. I can remember how my tripod works. Now my studio area is set up. It is very bright back there, I am sorry. You can probably see my monitor, which is showing my capture screen. That's cool because that's actually what I'm trying to show you right now. So. Uh, I'll turn off that light in the back maybe. Let's uh. Get some focus in here, boys. Turn this monitor down. That should help. All right, so you can see here, I have Adam Audio A7 monitors that have been modified quite a bit. Um, behind here, I have an Adam Sub 10. And then over there, I have the Adam Audios again. And I also have the Kali audios, I believe it's Kali or Kali or Kali or Kali, who knows? Kali sounds right to me. Kali audio LP8s, which I reviewed, and they're pretty good for the price. Um, I particularly like them because they're more or less the polar opposite of the A7s. So these A7s can get kind of fatiguing, and the LP8s are basically the exact opposite of that. I, uh, it just lets me listen to music, work on mixes louder, longer, not louder. I listen to 83 dB SPL C weighted at negative 18 decibels full scale equals zero decibels BU is my monitoring level. Um, stuff is not equally spaced right now because I literally just move stuff around. So my problem is at this time is that don't want these monitors stacked like this. Um, and I, I mean, I don't mind stacking the monitors, but I don't want the eaves on the bottom. That's the problem that I'm trying to figure out. Um, these monitor stands are not the height that I want. I can easily go make some in my shop. Um, 
I can give you like a mini tour of my shop real quick, actually. That might be interesting. Uh, I'll do that in a minute or two. So I'm trying to think of how I want to set up these monitors. I haven't thought about it. I uh, really do need to think about that. So my current thought right now is, and this is, I believe, somewhat suboptimal, is to turn the A7s around the correct way, because this is definitely not correct. This is temporary. Uh, the dispersion pattern on these tweeters goes out like this, and then fairly narrow vertically, or horizontally in this case. So that really narrows the sweet spot. Um, sitting over there, you can hear a hole in the mid-range at like 1 to 3K. There's a bunch of dips, and it just sounds kind of hollow and weird. Um, if you flip these around, it almost completely goes away. So what I want to do is flip these around, and then put the eaves on top, but that's going to look dumpy. Um, and looks do matter, because I do have to look at this all the time. It's going to look like a hammerhead, with the big sideway thing on top. Um, Cali Audio is what I was going to do, is I was going to build new monitor stands, and put those right here, in the middle. I have like short near fields. So those are going to go away temporarily um, while I build new monitor stands. Uh, these microphones here, this is an XY setup that I made uh, for room recording anything in this space. So I just made a secondary little clip and microphone stand, and these are facing XY. Or, you know. So. The plan here is still unsure. I can put, I don't know. So if I'm sitting here, if I'm just chilling right here, my concern right now is I have this level, which is cool, but I have my rack on the side here with my Apollos and preamps and, uh, UAD satellites and a bunch of vinyl, the vinyl that I like to listen to the most. Um, I believe there's an interference from that rack, and I don't really want to move that rack. I think I probably should move the rack. Seems like that's the, that's the plan there, is to put the eaves on the bottom and... Put the eaves on the bottom and the atoms on top of them. I mean, I can just stack them up to the ceiling, and that's going to be kind of stupid, honestly. Uh, if anybody watching, there's a few people watching right now. Do you have any ideas? I'm all ears. Uh, the Eve SC307s can be used vertically, uh, you know, like this. But that's not recommended, I believe. Let me look at the quick start guide. That's the manual. Let's see what the quick start guide says here. Thank you for choosing Eve Audio Studio Monitors. In the development of this product, we've incorporated many considerations with attention to detail, a lot of experience, and also our love for making and playing music. Every Eve Audio Studio Monitor has passed a long time QC procedure and is measured and adjusted to an ideal measurement curve with a tolerance of plus or minus half a decibel. The complete owner's manual for our three-way studio monitors can be downloaded from http http colon slash slash www.eve slash audio dot de slash download slash manual slash capital eve capital audio underscore capital web capital manual underscore 305 dash 307 underscore capital e capital n dot pdf. Thank you and best regards from Berlin, Germany. Roland Spence, CEO and head of R&D. I hope you appreciated that. So, once again, if you're joining Eve Audio Studio Miners SC307 PS112, I'm unboxing them. I'm figuring out what the heck I'm going to do with them. I did not think this through. I just spent a lot of money. Well. Relative a lot of money, I guess. So, what I need to do is make sure I have all the content. It says, 
package content. Mains power. Oh, I should make sure my mains power is correct. That's a good thing. Audio connections. Set dip switches to variable. Set woofer select so that the low woofers are outside in a stereo setup. Okay. That's going to take me some grokking and front knob operation because these are digital and they have light up LED things. So, <sighs> all right. So let's get the studio monitors up. Let's get the Cali audios out of the way. I guess I'm just going to derp around with this and see how it looks. So let me make sure that you can see me do this. Because when I drop something, I am certain that you are going to enjoy watching it. So, put these off. This is very unscientific for the moment. I'm going to set these up, and then once they are set up, I am going to use Room EQ Wizard to tune the placement, to tune subwoofer, get everything as good as I can. These are old foam things that I use for changing the angle. Cali Audios, like I said, are going to be set up like in the back here as secondary near field. I guess these would be tertiary near field reference monitors. Um, let me grab an SC307 here. Oh my gosh! Ugh, that was not wise. Let's see how I feel. These need to be pulled away from the wall because of... Alright, so I'm going to go grab a tape measure. I'll be right back. One second. I had to grab a headband too because I'm sweating a bit. All right, so I believe when I read the technical manual, it said 19 inches away from the wall. All right, so it's actually really far away from the wall. Um, I do have a broadband absorber behind it, so I feel fairly comfortable with this placement for the time being. Um, let me approximate what my listening triangle would be. The equilateral triangle here-ish. So I put my monitors... 62 inches away. Oh, whammy. Whammy. I'll put that there. And brilliante. So that puts me in freedom units. That is 12 small freedom units from the wall. And let's see what we can do with those atoms. Let's, uh, Man, I bet this is dirty, huh? Adam on top of Eve. Oh. Sure looks like Eve got an extra rib, though, huh? Alrighty. That is mildly sexy. Uh, these should be... About ear height. What's my ear height right now? Those are a bit low. Oh, man. So, I want to have these approximately ear level. So, let's measure. So, ear level is 52 small freedom units for my ear. That means 
tweeter level here. I have like 20 of my cables on the ground. So I need to come 12 inches up. <clears throat> wow. So, actually, you know what? <laughs> I think the eaves actually do need to go on top of these for them to be at ear level. So, let's give this a try. Let's give this the hammerhead look. By the way, I live in Tampa Bay. In the Tampa Bay area, I should say. And recently, hammerhead sharks were found out in the bay. And that's pretty cool. Because hammerhead sharks are cool. Alright. This is going to look dopey. Oh my gosh, this is going to look dopey. This is... This is an unfair treatment of high quality audio products. It looks like Wally or Rob from the Nintendo fame. Uh, however, that does feel legitimately close to correct because I have both tweeters at a good height. My gosh, that looks that looks really, really stupid. Is the lamp like freaking you out, guys? Like, do I need to turn the lamp off? Probably need to turn the lamp off, right? I don't think I can look at that all day. And legitimately take this seriously in any way whatsoever. I mean, no. There has to be a better solution. I have been pinged. It looks like the stabbing robot from Futurama. That stabbing robot's name is Roberto. What if I put a nice floral dress on it? Does it help? Does it help? Does this do it? Is this doing it for you? It's not doing it for me. Just feels like some direct to disc Wally -E sequel. <sighs> what am I supposed to do? All right, what's the next plan here? I can stack them vertically, which I don't want to do. Say yes to the dress. Is that how this works? I mean, the, the A7s are front boarded. So, uh... I don't like this. No, sir, I don't like it. So, A7s on top, I believe, are the best solution. Possibly.
Somebody has said return the things. I could do that. I could I could return them. I believe that is a significant reason to return something like uh dear front end audio, I would like to return these monitors because they look like Wally when I put them on my stands. I love my pants. Um, okay, so there's legitimately no solution to this. This is like Tetris where you have two blocks, but you need to clear a whole line. And, you know, you can't do that, I guess. Well, you can do it with, no, you can't. You can't do it with two straights. I don't play enough Tetris. I don't play enough Tetris to even know the terms. Uh... Build a taller stand. Yeah, well, so here's the problem. If I build a taller stand, I can build this up, get this up to 52 inches, and now the atoms are just like literally up here. So that would put the tweeters on the atoms. 52. Yep, right here. I would have my tweeters up here. Which is not ideal. The Wally setup was was good. The Wally setup was good. The Wally setup was good. So let's try this for now. Let's try the eaves on the bottom. Let's see how that ends up measuring. Because the final measurement, you're not watching somebody unboxing. The unboxing is over. You're watching somebody struggle with making a badly planned out purchase. So, let's, let's be truthful about what's happening right now. It has nothing to do with unboxing. It has everything to do with watching me struggle with basic decisions that I should have made before I spent money on anything. So these things are st still heavier than I expect them to be. And it's not a problem to lift them. It's a problem when I think I can put my arms out and grab them and yank my back to pull them where I want. So we're flipping these guys over. I'm going with the aesthetic look. The irrational choice, where I am placing the speakers the way they look the best, rather than the way that they sound the best. For now. If it turns out that after measurements, acoustic measurements, that this is as suboptimal as I believe it probably is, then I will change it. I, mean, I will live with a better sounding solution. But for now, I'm going to try the better looking solution. So I don't know if you can see this. I have woofer selection here. So I gotta go in the back with something to flip a little switch. I have dental picks that I keep for this purpose on my electronics bench. Squeezers. I generally like to use the dental picks that I have Taking the temper out of so that I can bend them easy. So woofer select front front of you. So I want the woofer on the outside. So let's see. How does this switch work? Uh I want the switch on the outside. All right. Oh, I get it. I get it. The switch matches the side that the woofer goes on. Wow. If, there, if this was the Special Olympics, I'd have three goals right now. Alright, I'm set to 115 on the back. That's what I want. So that looks alright. So next thing to do here 
is do other stuff. I'm gonna repost my link. Uh, I measured my ear height standing up straight. You are correct. However, I don't lean back like this to listen to music. Not most of the time. So this is definitely not ear height. Unless this is proper mixing posture, in which case I missed that class. I did miss that class. All right, let's plug back in the atoms before I forget. I really can't bend over like that. It makes me feel pretty bad. I will plug in the eaves in a little bit because I still got to get the subwoofer over here. I'm going to put it on the left side near the front. So now I got to flip some stuff around here. Get this guitar out of the way. I guarantee I'm going to destroy one of these guitars. It's going to happen. Like, there's no way I'm not going to break something tonight. Because every time I do this, I destroy something. I destroy something valuable. So, monitor off. Cable unplugged. Power cable unplugged. I'm going to bring the monitor over here. I need to make sure I have a tape measure while I'm over here. Got to think ahead because I don't want to be over here with the monitor. Oh, I can put this on top of my record player for now. Technics SLD2 for listening purposes. All right, so now I've got to do some acrobatics around some cables. <laughs> All right. Disaster aversion number one. We've done it. Let me switch this over here to this side because you probably didn't see my beautiful ballet moves. Ah. All right. Here we go. I'm set this down here temporarily. And I'm going to make sure I have my tape measure on hand. We were 12 freedom units away. That was the plan. Things got moved around a bit. All right. Set the woofer select before. That would have to be. Oh, hey. Hey. Did I screw something up on the other one? Well, for select, it's supposed to be on the outside. That one's our. What? I guess I'm I'm skeptical of this because this one's already set up correctly and I would think they'd become from be coming from the factory all the same so uh, let's see here all right time just get this on here for now. And then grab the tape measure. Let's get back here for real. I used to take a lot of time sorting my cables making everything super pretty, making sure everything was wrapped nicely. And then I just got so incredibly sick of having to unwrap stuff and redo stuff 
and splice in new cables every single time something changed. And I just, I just stopped. And now I just let my, my stuff just fill on the floor where it is. Took me a long time to get to that state where I was okay with that, but I managed eventually. This feels like this is pointing differently. I need a way to set the angle correctly because I think my broadband absorbers are set up in a an asymmetrical manner. So I will need to do something to fix that. Make sure this is set to 115 on the back. Well, for selection is on the outside. Ah, that bass guitar sounds so good. And then you might ask yourself, why does he have his good sounding P bass out in the where he can't get it? And to you, I would say, I didn't think that through. All right, so how do I get this angle correct? So I have two points I could measure from the wall and then that would give me an angle by measuring the distance of those two points um, and then the distance from here to the wall so let me go ahead and see what the other monitor is because the other monitor feels like it's correct so what I'm saying is measure from here to the wall in the back corner and then measure from here to the wall and so this measurement stays the same, the back measurement. This measurement changes. That changes the angle of the monitors. And then I can measure the back corner to change the distance. And so if I have those three points equally measured from the wall on both monitors, then they are going to be at the same angle and the exact same distance. I know that my chair, keyboard, mouse, and computer are set up to be perfectly in the center of the room underneath my cloud here. So, let's see what we got. 20 and a half. So, so here. All right, see what these measurements are. 20, 12, and 14 and a half. 20. 12 and 14 and a half. That will give us the identical angle and distance. So, first let's get the distance from the wall. I'll take this bass guitar down temporarily. So, this would be 14 and a half. So, I got to scoot 14. So 20, holy crap, not even close. Wow, all right. So these are gonna look a lot, oh shoot, shoot. I almost just threw that. <sighs> all righty. So 20 and a half. So that's at um, so 14 and a half was the back, right? It is 20 and 12. So that's at so I need to come this way a tad bit. Get this 12, that's a 12. This is it 21? So this point, back point, needs to stay the same. This point needs to go towards the wall. It means I need to turn it inwards slightly. So, 20 and a quarter. So, but this corner needs to come this way. This corner needs to go that way, just the tiniest of bits. So, perfect at... Well, please be at 20. Thank you, sir. 14 and a half. 
not even close. So this needs to maintain the same angle. This angle needs to not change. Miners need to come away from the wall. 14. So I think my concerns about this being an interference are absolutely founded. 14 and a half. 20 and a half. So I need to do a very slight adjustment. So this rack right here is absolutely positively in the way. And I need to deal with that. So my concern right now is that moving this rack away decreases accessibility and I have a USB C cable that is not long enough. But my alternatives are having interference. So for now we're going to shift this 200 and something pound filled rack across my wood floor. My USB cable is very much nearing its limit. All right, so I need to get myself a longer USB. No, it's not a USB-C cable, I am sorry. That is a Thunderbolt 3 cable, and if you use a USB-C cable, you are just going to be unhappy, because it won't work. Next up, power. Next up, subwoofer. Next up, A&W root beer. All right, so get this out of the way. I'm going to need to build new monitor stands for uh, my Caliadias. And if you didn't realize how big this subwoofer is, I am a big person. You couldn't tell by the fact that the two millimeter cable, the two millimeter, the two meter cables there were. Uh, a good 10 centimeters or so shorter than my arm span. Um, this guy needs to go there in the back. So what I need to do is, is take this off the chair, I suppose. Seems unhealthy. Uh, make sure you lift with the back. So I, need, I have a 4x10 base cabinet in the back here because that helps keep all my magnetic pixies in line. So I'm going to scooch this. Actually, I can put the two subwoofers next to each other, I think. I didn't explain the passive radiator, by the way. Which I said I would. So, I will explain the passive radiator. Shortly. Let me find the distance between the feet here. See if this actually will fit. All right, 14 inches. This might actually fit on this thing in the back. Yeah. Don't think I can make that fit. Maybe. Maybe I can make this fit. Maybe I can make this fit. Nope. I'm going to put it on the ground. It's going to be put on the ground. So, these microphones need to move temporarily. Maybe not even temporarily. I might just actually like to have them there permanently. Don't know. So now I need to get this subwoofer into that corner without killing myself. So, 
how do I need to orient my body? So I'm going sideways. I don't want to knock the monitor down with my back. So I'm going to pick this up, shuffle. I'm going to lift over the keyboard. I'm going to twist so that my butt has a place to go. I'm going to set it down and then I'm going to twist it. So, give this a shot. Ah, oh, I forgot about the stupid freaking microphone arm. All right, so there is a lift right here. Please tell me I'm going over it. Oh my gosh, am I going over it? Thank goodness. Now I'm turning. So my butt has a place to go. Ah. 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 Please. Ah. All right. We did it, boys. I just want to point out that this subwoofer is only slightly smaller than the 4x10 base cabinet in the back. That is impressive. All right, so we have three, two millimeter, two millimeter. I'm just gonna say millimeter. Millimeters are the best units. We got three 2,000 millimeter cables that we need to plug in. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna have a seat. I bet you can't see me right now, probably. I would assume because uh, you maybe see me. There, subwoofer plugged in almost. Subwoofer is plugged in. All right, the side monitor needs to be plugged in. It's gonna be kind of annoying because I have this Thunderbolt cable in front of me. All right, we're gonna do the fun game where I feel for which direction this is so that I can plug it in. Three asymmetrical prongs goes to the right. Where is it again? I lost it. I have the cable pointing in the right direction. There it is. Boingo, boingo. I literally have nowhere to plug this in. How does that happen? Really? There's not a single free slot. This happens every time. Every time you buy something new, you need another power strip. Every time. You buy something new, you need a new power strip. You could, it could be like, you know, you could have a full power strip, like all the ports open. And then suddenly, uh, you need a power strip. So we go into the amazing cable box number one. We get a new power strip. Because why not? Thrown in the back. And while we're over here, we get a different box with XLR cables because we are going to need a handful of these. There's not many in there, I don't think. I think there's like 20 or so pulled up in there. I have been pinged.
Oh, uh, whatever. Drama. Deal with it later. I got cooler stuff to mess with right now. All right, so bad boy gets plugged in here. I have, in case anybody is wondering, I only have one single chain of power strips. Nothing ridiculous. I was the one who wired this room. So I'm quite confident with the gauge of wire running to the wall and the 20 amp breakers that I'm using, these are 15 amp power strip circuit breaker -y things. My grasp of the English language right now is mm, not the greatest. So, what kind of cabling do I need here? I need two XLR cables. And ah, oh, crap. I need XLR to TRS. And I don't think that I have that on hand. Oh, wait. I know what's happening. I know why I didn't have extra extras. I have you know what I did is I pre-plugged in cables for myself so I just have cables back here chilling because I thought I'll be smart I'll get ahead of myself and look what I did I was smart and I got ahead of myself All right, so from Eve to, um, subwoofer, suboptimal. Oh man, come on. Left in. Why is this so hard to read? need to see which one is which. Right in, right out. So this is left. What I am doing right now. Okay. The left monitor. I'm going to uncoil this cable. Don't want coiled cables on the ground. Not right now. I will be later off video. I will be making new cables for this that are the correct length, so there's not a bunch of garbage, passenants, and extra nonsense flying around for no good reason. I knew something was wrong. Gosh. How does this make sense? I don't. Oh. You know, it'd be helpful if I plugged into the left out. Left out. Not left in. Left out. Gotta use your noggin. Got to use your noggin. All right. Do I have any shredder cables in here already? Right? 
Nope. Best I got right now, so. All right, so on this side, I'm going to plug in the sub first and toss this over. So this is plugged in. Need to unwrap this cable. I'm not going to bore you on stream with me building cables and running cables and tying cables. Because that's not that fun. What is fun? Getting monitors hooked up. So that I can hear them. What's even more fun is having instruments back on the wall where they belong. All right. So those are plugged in. So what I need now is I need an XLR mail to TRS. TRS mail to XLR mail. And I think I have that actually on the wall. The back here with all my cables. I know I have it, in fact. I have uh, on the back where you can't see it, I have rails. What I do is I tie these up. And I just Velcro stuff right on the rail. That so keeps things nice and easy and tidy for me. So I got some blue and green cable here. I guess blue will be on the left because the letter L is in it. That works, right? We're doing Sesame Street here on Admiral Bowlby. And hey, if you're watching this and you want to share it with some friends, that would be cool. Because viewers are cool. Oh, hey, my baseball game just turned on. It's the Cubs and the Colorado Rockies. So I'm going to turn that off. That's... Don't want that audio on right now. Okay. Try to keep YouTube from striking me for dumb things because I had no control over that. So. Left out to. I use a PreSonus monitor station. I actually do like this device. I have no complaints about sound quality or. So this goes to the outputs, not to the inputs. Okay. So that one's plugged in. We got one more to plug in here. Um, all right, so I don't need to throw anything here, going from here to here. My mental capacity is going downhill. I'm sorry, I'm talking right near my mic. My mental capacity is going downhill rather fast. Every time I bend over like that, my blood pressure goes down, and I start to feel crappy, and it takes a little while for me to... Uh, 
to actually come back to reality. And uh, this has happened multiple times now. And it's building up and making me feel not so awesome. So, hey, how do we turn these on? It's a clicky clicky. Hey, spinning round thing. So let me go over here and make this one clicky clicky. So there's a power switch and then there's a front button. What's up, bro? Clicky clicky. Bro. Oh. Gotta plug it in all the way. See? Look at that. You plug in the device all the way, it can get some pixies. Pixies do their work, make things light up. It's like a Disney movie. So. I don't know how to set the volume on these things at all. I guess that's why you read the guide. All right. All right, so turn volume setting. So I press the knob. This is so confusing. Five point one. Turn volume knob setting. How do I know even know if they're on? Like do I just play music? Is that what happens? Um, well, let's just play some like music that won't get me striked on YouTube. Go to speaker select C. What's something weird? Super Mario World, probably not ideal. Taylor Swift, probably not ideal. Let's go with some Cheats Rage. Okay, not it. No audio. Alrighty, so, quick start. Blah, 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 check the settings, I did that. Connect the inputs, connect the outputs, I did that. In case you combine, engage the power switch on the rear side. I did that. Turn the subwoofer on. I need a light. How the heck do I know if this thing is on? All right, switches on the back are good. So, thing is spinning. The level is good. I don't know what's happening right now. There's an LED on.
How do I know if there's audio getting to my stuff at all? Like, how do I troubleshoot this? Do I plug the subwoofer into my A7s? And see if it's feeding to A7s? Is that the plan? Now, this is actually uh, kind of annoying. I thought it would be kind of cool, but it's kind of not. Thus far, at least. And especially when my ear is right next to this thing, I'm just waiting for it to blast my head off. And that'll be great. Blow up my ears right when I get new monitors. The system volume setting. Okay. 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 I got subwoofer moving. I got the subwoofer moving. That's good news. So, how do I do this here? This has got to be... Okay, I just turned it off. So now I just gotta turn it back on. So I can turn just the sub off. Alright, so. So. Where did I put my flashlight? It's on the floor. So maybe my dip switches are wrong. I thought I checked those. Dip switches look right. So why am I not getting output? So let's check the A7s. Alright, so I am definitely getting output. some bass. Got some bass. Alright, so I'm going to assume for now that subwoofer works. So now the next step is to get a speaker working. The power is on. So here I I'm going to move stuff so I can sit down on this guitar amp. High desk low. Alright, so... So high filter, desk filter, low. What is LED mode? I 
I actually don't understand why I get no audio. I'm gonna switch the cables to the A7s to see if audio is getting to the speaker. If audio is getting to the speaker. All right. So. So we're definitely getting audio. I am amazed that six people are watching me struggle with this right now. All right, so SC307 manual. Let's see what we can learn. Mute. I mean, this says that, am I supposed to just turn this? I don't know, uh, whatever. Press the control once to enter the settings menu. Here you can set three different filters as well as the LED ring filter. Maybe I need to press and hold this. That's gonna be a guess here. Nothing, nada, zilch, zero. Let's go with SC307, no audio. Uh, nothing to start. All right, the manual really doesn't explain this very well at all. And I'm not wearing my glasses, that probably doesn't help. Turn the volume control to adjust the volume. That doesn't do anything, Mr. Manual. Doesn't actually do anything. I don't... <sighs> I don't get it. Why does this have to be so complicated? Why can't I just turn a volume knob? Turning the volume knob does nothing. I have turned the volume knob. All right, so. Turn the control clockwise. So it's not in standby because the LED light is not off. So they're not in standby. Turning the knob does nothing. Let's double check the power settings. Don't know. I check this once. Set the 115. Get input. Nothing. 
nothing happens. Nothing actually happens. Whoops. So I'm in standby right now. So we're up. I don't want to be in standby. Stop it. I want to be in settings. So high filter. Desk low LED. All right. So let's read what LED mode does for us. I get to listen to some nice bass at least, right? I turned it on and off. I swapped the cables on the other monitors. Uh, if I swap the cable, from the Eve to the Atom, the atoms make noise. So I know that a signal is getting to it. So where is LED mode? So, maybe, maybe one of the dip switches is on. Let me make sure the volume is not set to lock. Because wouldn't that be funny? The volume was locked right now. I absolutely positively locked the volume. Yay, I'm a moron. Congratulations, everybody. So this monitor isn't making enough noise. Barely making any noise. So what have I done here? We're plugged in. We're turned on. Why? I have to tell you, this makes this all a lot less exciting. All right. Same thing as before, let's switch this over to the atoms. We do have a problem. The 
this isn't making noise. So we have a cable problem this time. I have to say, this sounds really clear though. That is actually kind of creepy, the way it sounds. So, do I have this plugged into the wrong thing? Right now I have the Atom plugged in as my reference because I know that works. So let's make sure it's a bad cable. Okay. Why not? Why not, of course, right? Alright, well, it's making noise. Making noise is what we want. So. these back. Alright, that wasn't a good time for the song to fade out. That kind of freaked me a bit. Alrighty. Seems like we got some noise. Streets of Rage soundtrack, by the way. I love that game. Don't like the soundtrack so much, but I love the game. So somebody asked why the volume lock is on the back and the volume knob's on the front. The volume knob actually does more than just tell you... Uh, what's there. I'm going to readjust the camera slightly. The volume knob has multiple functions. So it's a high filter, a low filter, a parametric, well, it's not a parametric EQ, it's a desk filter, which is a notch filter that changes its corner frequency depending on if it's being cut or boosted. So I don't know if you can see this, but the volume knob does a lot more than just volume, which is in fact why I was confused with how this whole thing works. So the next thing I need to do is set up the subwoofer. And now once all this is set, then I'm going to stop and uh, let this be so I can, tomorrow I can come in here and I can set up some measurement microphones and run room eq wizard and then uh be good so i guess that, that guy is very out of focus right now my wife is messaging me i'm still streaming it took me a while to set these things up because i'm Mildly retarded. Just mildly, though. Well, the subwoofer has a remote. I could use that, I guess. I suppose.
All right, so to meet the subwoofer to meet the whole system. Turn the system volume control to the minimum level. So to mute the system, you turn the volume off. I'm glad I learned that. Settings menu. Press the system con system volume control once to enter the settings menu. Here you can set two different filters: satellite filter and sub filter. Sub filter, blah blah blah. We recommend saying it eighty hertz. So what's the cutoff on my? So I want to set the subwoofer so you know it crosses over with the speakers. Just I don't want to cut the satellites at eighty hertz yet. I want to see if they can operate at full range for now. So I'm reading, I'm reading, phase button, blah blah blah, pure satellite button. You can mute the subwoofer via the remote, which is nice. I like that. Uh, you know, I could have put the Cali Audios on top of those too. That would probably look alright. I don't know how that's going to sound. I don't like that, honestly. I need just to make new stands. Alright, boys. I'm going in. Don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to press buttons until something happens. Let's turn on some music. I got Zomboy on here. What the heck? for playing music, I guarantee it. Why not though, right? I keep forgetting. Kind of makes it difficult to stream this sort of thing when uh, you can't play music that you're really familiar with. Definitely not familiar with my own music. Alrighty, so, see if this battery remote thing does anything. Look at me, I'm turning up the volume! That is intense. Wow. That 
sounds amazing. It sounds even better when it's set up right. See, I gotta set up the subphase, or polarity, technically, I suppose. It does not have variable phase, nor does it allow you to adjust any sort of group delay or anything of the sort. It just flips the polarity. I hate when they call it. Whatever, doesn't matter. Obviously, they write words on there, and I know what it means, so that's sufficient communication. Um, what else? I gotta stack up these boxes somewhere. Oh! I gotta find the sub, it's the thing that's missing the foot, it's the back left corner. Okay, I can do this. We're already. Good stuff. We're set. We're set. So, I. You gotta measure things. Acoustically measure things. You need to physically measure things. I gotta make new stands for the Cali Audios, which is not a big deal. I bet having those mics on with the feedback probably made things sound a little bit boomier than they needed to sound. Wait, it says these aren't making noise. Lies. Is this sending? Oh. Okay, it's mute the send. All right. I was sending audio to the Oceanway Studios UAD plugin even though it was muted, so they pre-send mute, post-send mute, sorry. So, uh, there we go. This is not the greatest setup so far, but thank you for watching. I hoped that you enjoyed watching me struggle. Um, make some bad decisions, and uh, hopefully by the time I get back around to this, I will have found that stupid $10 Apple USB-C headphone adapter that I lost, which I didn't mention this whole stream when it just crossed my mind, and now I'm annoyed about it again. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, this will be on my YouTube channel for people who want to watch it, I suppose. Uh, have a good night.